Believe it or not, this shot that you're looking at right now was shot on the Sony ZV-E10, a camera you can pick up for under $1,000. I got this camera when it first came out around two years ago, and I've used it to shoot commercials, short films, behind the scenes content, and more. So in this video, I wanna give you my honest thoughts about the ZV-E10, which, spoiler alert, I think is the number one camera option for filmmakers getting started in the film industry. After all, it can get beautiful cinematic shots like this, can it? I'm not gonna go through all kinds of charts and graphs in this review. You can find all that elsewhere. In this video, I'll be telling you about the features I actually care about as a full-time filmmaker and video producer. One of the biggest advantages that Sony brings to the table in all of their cameras, including the ZV-E10, is the lightning-fast eye-tracking autofocus. My first camera was a super old Canon Rebel series camera with terrible autofocus, so when I first got started, I had to use manual focus for everything. This is a great skill to have if you wanna move up in the industry and get into the camera department on big sets working with cinema lenses that don't have autofocus, but for the average independent filmmaker running with a bare-bones crew and a tight schedule, being able to trust that your autofocus is dependable and you won't end up looking at blurry footage when you start editing can be a game changer. The Sony ZV-E10 also has touch to focus tracking, meaning that you can just tap on whatever you want the camera to be focusing on in your scene and it'll lock onto the subject and track them as they move around in the shot. One of the things that'll lower the quality of films faster than anything else is shaky footage. Now the Sony ZV-E10 doesn't have any sort of in-body image stabilization like some of Sony's higher end cameras do, but it does feature a fairly decent digital stabilization that it can apply while you're recording your footage. While it does get the job done, it applies a pretty hefty 40% crop to your image, which makes it a lot harder to get blurred out backgrounds when stabilization is enabled. For that reason, we pretty much always leave it turned off, but we do have it enabled right now just so you can see how good the stabilization is. Now, something cool about the Sony ZV-E10 is that while you're recording your videos, the camera also records the gyroscopic motion of the camera in 3D space. Basically, it tracks the movement of your hands in the camera through 3D space so that the stabilization can be applied to it later in Sony's post-production software, Catalyst Browse. I know some people online have found success with this method, but personally, in my experience, it's always been buggy and hasn't worked the way it's supposed to. So ultimately, to combat shaky footage, I've found the best way is to just leave the camera on a tripod, monopod, or a gimbal, or if you want to get some handheld shots, either shoot wide or activate the digital stabilization in the camera if you're in a pinch. When it comes to low light performance in this camera, I have some mixed feelings. Compared to the first camera I started on, where I couldn't even raise my ISO above 800 without the image starting to completely fall apart due to grain, the ZV-E10 is a lifesaver. I can comfortably raise the ISO up to 2000, even 4000 before the grain starts to become frustrating. Ultimately, for a camera in this price range, the performance is above average. Being able to raise your ISO up to two to 4,000 really is plenty of range for most film projects where you'll be setting up lights to light your scene anyway, even if they're just some cheap desk lamps from Walmart. The only time you'd realistically need to go higher than this is if you're shooting at some sort of event at night or perhaps a wedding if it starts to run later into the night. In any case though, I'd say the low light performance on the ZV-E10 is great for its class and it totally gets my endorsement. One of the nicest features that I really appreciate about this camera is the rotating screen. When it comes to narrative filmmaking, the rotating screen design versus the up and down flip screen design of other APS-C cameras from Sony isn't really that big of a deal, honestly. As long as you have a screen that's capable of moving around in some capacity, you really should be just fine. But I probably wouldn't recommend getting a camera like what I started with, where the screen is just fixed into the back of the camera body because it makes getting low angle shots and overhead shots very difficult, unless you shell out the money on an external monitor. Monitor. Where the rotating screen comes in really beneficial for me though is in instances like this where I'm recording myself and I want to see what my shot looks like while I'm in front of the camera. In a lot of the marketing put out for this camera by Sony, they really push the sound quality of the microphone built into the camera. Honestly though, to my ears, I don't really feel like it's leaps and bounds ahead of any other microphone on modern cameras. And like with any camera, I certainly wouldn't recommend just relying on the audio being recorded into the microphone natively on the camera. You're always gonna wanna set up an external microphone closer to the person speaking, like a shotgun mic boomed overhead like I'm using right now actually, or some sort of lavalier system. I made a video a few weeks ago about how to shoot cinematic films on the ZV-E10 where I talk a little bit about how to capture clean audio even if the only mic you're using is your phone. So I'll link it on screen now in the description so you can check it out if you're a little fuzzy on production sound. 
Something really important to me as a filmmaker is the battery life of my camera. While the battery life of the W50 batteries on the ZV-E10 are nothing to write home about, they are fairly decent. I'd say as long as you have like five or six batteries, you can comfortably shoot all day without having to recharge any of them. Though of course I'd always recommend setting up a charging station on set just in case you end up needing an extra. Personally, I only have three batteries and that's treated me just fine, but also I've never shot a 10 plus hour day on just the CVE-10 as my A-cam either. The camera does feature an APS-C crop sensor that's able to record in 4K resolution at 24 or 30 frames per second or full 1080p HD at up to 120 FPS slow motion. In today's market, those are definitely good specs when compared to any other cameras at a similar price point, but nothing beyond belief by any means. But when I think about the first camera that I had that could barely shoot at 1080p at 24 FPS, if I'd been able to get my hands on something like the ZV-E10 with these kinds of record settings and all the features packed into this camera, I would have absolutely pushed the visual quality of my films years into the future. I'd say for any filmmaker, whether you're just starting out or you've been in the game for a while, the ZV-E10 really has all the record settings that you need to make beautiful films. Are there advantages to the more in-depth settings and rigs like the FX6 or the Canon C70? Absolutely. But at the end of the day, if you boil filmmaking down to its basics, what you have in the ZV-E10 is more than enough to produce some incredible films. After all, your camera isn't what makes an awesome film. You do. Probably my biggest issue with the Sony ZV-E10 is the overheating. I initially got the camera as a B cam to my A7S III, and I've had the camera shut off on me several times during long form interviews due to overheating, just recording normal 4K 24 FPS footage. Thankfully, in all these instances, the A7S III never had an issue. But had the ZV-E10 been my primary camera, this definitely could have presented a major problem. But keep in mind that in all of these instances, the camera had been recording nonstop for over 45 minutes. I've never had this be a problem on a shoot where I was starting and stopping the camera in between takes. While this probably won't be a big issue for you unless you're shooting long, uninterrupted takes back to back, it's definitely something to be aware with if you're making films with this camera. At this point, I mainly use the Sony ZV-E10 as a webcam for doing digital meetings with clients in my studio. Since it has a big sensor and handles dynamic range well, it pretty much ends up being the nicest looking shot on any call I do compared to everyone else that I'm meeting with. From time to time, I will break it out as a C -cam or BTS camera for a shoot, and of course I use it for making videos here online to show you how you can get beautiful pictures like this even if you don't have tens of thousands of dollars invested into film equipment and have never been to film school. I also use it for a filmmaking program I run online called the 30 Day Filmmaking Kickstart. We've been doing live Q&A calls in the program where I field questions from filmmakers of all skill levels, and I've been using the ZV-E10 as my camera during the calls. The goal of the program is to teach people how to kickstart their filmmaking career with a short film that actually makes makes you money and opens doors in the industry to bring your dream projects to life. It can be really difficult breaking into the film industry when you're first starting out and don't have any contacts that have never been to film school. So we offer step-by-step -step training on not just the filmmaking basics like lighting, sound, film editing, camera settings, and more, even if you're on a super tight budget, but also how you can find top-notch actors and crew members to help staff your own productions, even if you're only paying in turkey sandwiches. I believe that you have incredible things inside of you that can be released through filmmaking, so my mission is to do everything I can to participate with you in bringing that vision to life through film. We've worked really hard on making this program into the best that it can be. So if it sounds like something that might make sense for you where you are in your filmmaking journey, I'd love it if you went ahead and checked out the program via the first link in the description below. I can't wait to see you in the program.